because uh, this is another year. We, 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 we've never met this year or seen one another or heard from one another. This is a new year and uh, this is our, our first meeting. And I pray that God will, will do mighty and extreme things in our lives. We thank God for the years that are past. We know we've gone through um, so much, but we thank God we are here. We are here. That means God has a purpose for our lives. And that's why he has brought us back here. And that's why he has given us uh, this time even to be here. We thank him so much. I want us to take this time to thank God for, for, for the time he has given us, for this time that we are alive, for this time that we are here, for this time that through, through thick, there was corona, there was sickness, there's all those things, but he has taken us through. We're not taking it for granted. We want to thank him. Tell him, thank you, Baba. Tell him, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for everything that he has done from you, from your children, your husband, your mother, your everything, your job. Some people have uh, lost their job during Corona. Some lost and they are still eating. Even today, you have been eating. Even today, I don't know from where. I don't know from where, but it's from God. And God has shown us it is not about the money. It's not about ourselves. It's not our good deeds. It's not about anything. It's just about him. It's all about him that we can even try our best. We can have millions and millions of money, but we can still die because it is him who gives life. It is not us. It is him who gives life. Let's go. Uh, if you can unmute, pray and, and thank God for this year that you are back in this marriage meeting. Thank him so much in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless your name. Father, we thank you. We cannot even be able to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for, Jesus. for the whole year which is over. Thank you, dear Lord. You have been with us, oh God. We have dressed, we have eaten, oh God. We have lived, oh God. Thank you, mighty God. There is Thank you, Father. Thank you. Nothing Father. we can give unto you, Jehovah, Amen. except thanking you. We thank you, my Redeemer, my Jehovah. God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless you, my God. We thank you, thank you Jehovah, for our um, that we have shelter, oh God, that we have full king of glory. We are not taking it for granted, Jehovah God. We are not taking anything for granted, mighty God, king of glory. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. There is no way to say thank you, Jehovah. To Nasemania Santa Babosa, not because they did anything, oh Jehovah, they just cried, oh God. Some were not even sick, but they could not wait upon Jehovah. Father, we want to thank you, we want to bless your name. We know you have a purpose for us, oh God. That's why we are here, Jehovah God. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Jehovah. We cannot say we are lucky, Jehovah, but we say we are blessed of you, oh God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, King of Glory, Jehovah, because of our children. We thank you, Jehovah, because of our parents, oh God. Thank you, Jehovah, even because of our parents. We thank you, Jehovah, for everything, mighty God. You are a God in heaven, oh Jehovah. You are bigger than what people say you are. You are greater than what people say you are, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We come with thanksgiving, oh We give you all the God. Oh God, we have forgotten many times to say thank you, but we are taking this time, oh Jehovah. 
forward to praise your Lord and tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh God. We thank you, Jehovah God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you. and it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now, now let's go and um, still go back and tell God to forgive our sins, cleanse us, um, help us to uh, to join with him, even as in now. Anything that will hinder you from hearing his word, anybody that you feel that has wronged you, maybe you're from work and you feel that somebody has wronged you or just woken up with bad mood or something, we want to tell God to cleanse us and to give us energy. He's, he's, uh, he, he's the one who gives us the joy. And uh, we are told that his joy is our strength. We cannot have strength if we have no joy. So we want to call for joy, joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, not happiness. Happiness comes from happening. It doesn't matter what is happening. We want the joy of the Lord that is our strength. So let us pray for forgiveness. And after praying for forgiveness, cleansing ourselves, then we, we, we ask for the joy of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jehovah God, we pray for forgiveness of our sins. Forgive us, oh God, we are sinners. If we say we are, we are, not, we are not sinners, we are lying to ourselves, oh God. We are sinners and have come short of your glory. Father, we pray for forgiveness, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, whatever we have had, whatever we have seen, whatever we we have done knowing and unknowingly we pray for forgiveness oh god forgive us oh jehovah the mistakes that we have done even long time but our ancestors that are affecting us oh god we pray that you forgive forgive them on our behalf the, the the mistakes that are done even by our leaders oh jehovah we pray that you forgive them forgive them oh jehovah god forgive us and cleanse our hearts oh god oh god help us even to forgive those who have wronged us oh jehovah we know that you are alive loving God, and you've told us to be like you, to see them as you see us, oh God, to hear them as you hear us, oh God. How many times, Jehovah God, have we wronged you and have come back to you and you've forgiven us, oh God. Help us to forgive others, oh Jehovah. Help us, oh God, to see you, oh God. Not to see ourselves, seeing that we have been wronged, we have been wronged. And we know, Jehovah God, that we have wronged you many a times, Jehovah, and you've forgiven us, oh God. Teach us, oh God, to love Love, your love, oh Jehovah, your love that you showed us, oh God, that is the love we want. We don't want the love that we are thinking. We don't want the love that we imagine. We don't want the love that we have read or watch other people do, Jehovah, but we want your love, oh God, that comes from heaven, oh Jehovah God. We want to love each and every one, oh Jehovah, to feel for each and every one, oh Jehovah, to care for each and every one, oh Jehovah, that when our and that we become one church, oh Jehovah. That when the hand is aching, even the legs cannot go anywhere. When the head is aching, the whole body sleeps, oh God. Father, we pray, dear Lord, that we shall love one another, oh Jehovah. Even as as you prepare to come, Jehovah God, that you'll find us, oh God, with no iniquity, oh Jehovah God, with no sin, oh God, because you'll have helped, helped us, oh God. Thank you, mighty King. Thank you, Jehovah God. You are a God in heaven and on earth. Let there be no doubt that you reign. You reign in our, ourselves. You reign everywhere. You reign in this world, oh God. You reign, you reign, you reign, your majesty. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory and honor, and it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, we thank God. Amen. And uh, we bless God even at this time, and we welcome everybody. And uh, we love to see everybody, and we are happy for you. Thank you for this time again. And um, um, we continue uh, with our praying. Um, can we have two prayer points or we are late? Yeah, you're muted. Yes, we can have it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
So we'll have two prayer points for our marriages and for our lives and for our children. So uh, it says uh, the, the one prayer point is every evil dedication and covenant working against my marriage, break and release me in Jesus' name. Every evil dedication is maybe you are a young child, you didn't know you were dedicated to something that you didn't know. Somebody said if that child is born, this and this will happen. There are some words that were said you're not even aware. Somebody came to see you when you are a baby, they came with some stories and they did some things we are not aware. And those things keep affecting people even today. You find that, you find things going wrong with you that you don't understand. You say, I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing the right, but this thing is keeping keeping on coming into my life. And that's why we pray so that if there's anything that hinders you, if there's anything, because we know that we, we didn't know our parents, we don't know where they went, they have their secrets. Some went even to see a witchcraft for, for people to be born. We don't know, we don't know what happened. Some even gave something for you to be born and you don't know. So when you grow up, you go through problems that you don't understand and they keep following you. Sometimes Now when they go, they become generation and they go up to uh, your children. But we want to, uh, to draw a bloodline and say whatever we have gone through, our children will not go through. And whatever is going through even now, it is going to change because our, we, will ne we will not endure our marriages again. We will enjoy as God designed it in the name of Jesus Christ. So every evil dedication and covenant working against my marriage break and release me in Jesus' name. So you can talk, say uh, your marriage, your, your children, marriages, and all that. Pray, 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 pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Every word, dedication, and covenant working against my marriage, break and release me in Jesus' name. Every evil dedication that is and covenant working against my marriage, break and release me in Jesus' name. Every evil dedication and covenant working against my marriage, I command you by the blood of Jesus, break and release me in the name of Jesus Christ. Release me in the break of, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil dedication and covenant working against my children in the name of Jesus Break, 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 and release them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil dedication and covenant working against my brothers and sisters' marriages. Break, 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 and release them. Release them by the fire of God and the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, break in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, empower my marriage to manifest physically in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit of God, empower my marriage to manifest physically. Let it manifest physically. You have been praying every day, every day, my marriage, my marriage. It has become your prayer point instead of enjoying it. We, are, we want it to be the best. We want you to enjoy it, to be giving thanksgiving, thanksgiving for your marriage, for your children's marriage, only thanksgiving. Anything the devil is bringing, we counterattack it by the blood of Jesus and the the, the, the blood of Jesus and the fire of God. So Holy Spirit of God, empower my marriage to manifest physically in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, empower my marriage to manifest physically in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, empower my children's marriage to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, empower my brothers and my sisters' marriages um, to, to manifest physical in the name of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ, Crush every marine witchcraft saying, I will not make it in marriage in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus Christ, crush every marine witchcraft saying, I will not make it in marriage in Jesus' name. Every marine spirit saying, I will not make it in my marriage. I command you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, die by fire, die by fire. Every, every marine spirit, blood of Jesus, crush it in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus Christ, crush every marine witchcraft saying, I will not make it in my marriage in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Every marine spirit that's saying it will not, it has been defeated because you're going to make it in marriage in Jesus' name. We thank God and we give God all the glory and honor. And this time we want to invite Minister Zawadi. I'll, I'll pray for her and then she will take over. Yes, pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for the vessel that you've used, oh God. Thank you, dear Lord, for 
gift za wadi Jehovah God. Thank you, dear Lord, for this you have put in her heart, oh God, and her mind, oh Jehovah. I thank you, Jehovah, for, for her king of glory. Thank you even for her, for agreeing, oh Jehovah, to be your vassal, oh Jehovah. Speak to her, oh God, speak through her, Jehovah God, that we shall hear you. King of glory, we pray that we shall listen and hear from you, oh Jehovah. We know that nothing will hinder us from hearing from you. Father, we pray that we will be doers and not hearers of your word, only Jehovah. That even as we do this, Jehovah, you are going to give us more and more strength, oh Jehovah, and grace, King of glory. We thank you and we honor you, Jehovah God. We give you all the glory. Thank you even for those years we have been in the platform, Jehovah. We're not taking it for granted. We know it's your, it's your power, oh Jehovah. It's your grace, King of glory. Thank you, dear Lord, for those you have saved here. Thank you for the marriages that you have restored here. We're not taking it for granted. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jehovah God. And we say even the ones that are remaining, they are going to be to share in the name of Jesus Christ, because Jehovah, you said our star shall shine in the name of Jesus Christ. This year, Jehovah God, I pray for anybody who has marital problem here, Jehovah God, that it shall be well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We expect uh, testimonies after testimonies, because you're our God and you're our Father. We thank you and we bless your name, at this, and it is in your holy name we pray and say thank you. Welcome, me. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. It's so good to see all of us this year. This is a year of great beginnings and new beginnings and accelerated beginnings. And it's a year yeah. that God is now going to show up and glorify himself in ways we've never seen possible or thought or dreamt possible. The Amen. church has been down, so much down. In terms of marriages in the church have been the ones that have been breaking. And not just breaking, they are staying, but they're already broken. Have you ever, um, you see uh, somebody with a car? It's a really nice car. It looks very good on the outside, but it's broken. The engine is broken. It doesn't start. It, it's just sitting outside in the yard or in the garage. The wheels are coming off like it's a it's a it's a Mercedes. It looks good on the outside, but it's broken. It's not functional. The problem with the marriages in the church is that there is a deception that marriage is as long as you're there, it's you you just stay there. God hates divorce. Unfortunately, there is some people, there are some people who are together, but they're already divorced. In the spirit realm, you're already seen as divorced. Just because you're together doesn't mean you're together. Togetherness, oneness, just like a relationship between us and God. Just think about it. How many people say they are Christians, yet they don't hear from God? Yet they don't have an intimate relationship with God? Yet they just carry a name, but not the works. They carry a name, but not the, the um, what God, who God is. So when people look at you, or when they're listening to you, or when they're following your life, they do not see God. Why? Because there is no oneness. So our relationship with Christ is the same as we should have in marriage. So we're going to... Um, look at a scripture and i would like us to turn to second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 and that says therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known christ according to the flesh yet now we know him according to the flesh no longer right? We just used to know about God. You know, there, there is a time where you grow up in the church and you just know about, hey, we are, we talk about, where are you from? We come from the church. Oh, yes. And it's a lot of works. So working in the church doesn't mean you know God deeper. You may just be working for him and that is knowing him according to the flesh. A lot of people think Christianity is working for God. No, Christianity is not works. It's relationship. 
and the relationship bring about the fullness of who God is. And it changes your life and makes you like Christ. And then people admire that, the, what they hear, what they see, and they want Christ. Just like Jesus, he was not going everywhere preaching. People would ask, would notice and say, this man is different. The way he speaks is different. Who he is and what he does, how he does his things is different. So I want us to, to go back into not being in the flesh, but in knowing Christ as who he is. So we used to know him according to the flesh, but not, not any longer. Why? This is getting into maturity. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, inside Christ, not outside just watching, not just hearing about him, but in him, inside him, you have, you're intimate with him. Being in Christ is just, just not saying you're a name, you're a Christian. Being in Christ is intimacy. Me and him are one. I hear what he says and I do. He hears me, he knows me. So if you are inside Christ, just like a husband and wife, think about it. When they're in the bedroom and they're having intimacy, they're in each other, right? The husband goes in the wife and the wife is in the husband. So they become a one. That's what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. How? You become one with Christ. You see, you're not walking alone. You are not doing things alone. You are together. You are intimate. He's in you, you're in him, right? He's a new creation. That's what makes Christians a new creation. That's what makes marriage different. We are one and not just sexually, but our hearts are beating as one. Our spirits, we are following Christ. We are one, we are in Christ. The beginning of a great marriage is a marriage where the spouse, your wife and your, or your husband is first of all, intimate with Christ. So if therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away, meaning that the things that you used to do by yourself, the things that you used to think alone, things that you used to work on alone, decisions that you made alone without consulting God, when you are single, when you are not married to Christ, when you are not one with Christ, when you are not intimate with him, those things that you did before you decided, I want what you want, Jesus. I need what you, all you that you are, not some of you, but all of you, right? So the Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed. Behold. Hey, wherever you are, just say behold. In other words, when they say behold, it's like, look. I present you the new creation. I present you the new normal. My new normal in Christianity is not when I'm doing things on my own. It's when I am consulting God. The new the new creation is what Jesus says, I do. I speak like Jesus speaks. I hear him, I obey. I hear him, I speak. The giftings of God at work through my life by the power of the Holy Spirit are representative of who God is. That my life is not one on the outside and another one on the inside. That my life is what you see is what you get. I am Christ-like in my home. I am Christ-like outside. I am Christ-like in the church. And I am Christ-like at the workplace. I am Christ-like on the streets. I am Christ-like in every aspect of my life. It doesn't matter who's watching. I am Christ-like in my bathroom. I am Christ-like in my toilet. I am Christ-like at all times. Behold, all things have passed away. Where I used to be two-faced, where I used to show you that me and my, my spouse are good, 
Yet we are fighting or we fought that morning and we don't forgive each other. We are not reconciling. We are not being like Christ. Well, we used to pretend that our family is perfect, yet we are struggling and we do not want to seek the face of God. Well, we would pretend that we love you, yet we talk behind your back. Well, I'm smiling at you, yet my heart is so far away from you. Well, I pretend that we're together, yet we're not. When you're in Christ, you are like Christ. When Christ is in you, he's a hope of glory. The glory light of God shines through you and you love just like him. You love your spouse just like he does. And that is why it is important to always pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus name, put your love in me that I may love my spouse with your love. Put your faithfulness in me. Put your humility in me. Put everything you are in me and your forgiveness that I may forgive him or her with your forgiveness. Therefore, if you're in Christ Jesus, you're a new creation. So let's say you are in Christ Jesus, your spouse is in Christ Jesus, Guess what follows to be in Christ Jesus? Your marriage. Your marriage becomes one. Your marriage becomes now in Christ Jesus. And what happens? Your marriage becomes for real. When you're laughing, you're laughing for real. When you're loving, you're loving for real. When you get angry, you correct each other in love. When you're forgiving, you forgive for real. Why? Because your marriage is in Christ Jesus. Remember, behold, the old has gone. The fleshly stuff. Remember because in, in, in verse 16, we used to regard Christ in the flesh, but not anymore. Now we have to work things in the spirit realm. And when we work things in the spirit realm, that means the Holy Spirit is the one who's guiding us into the love, into the intimacy, into the perfect um, children of God, right? So Christ is working in me through his Holy Spirit. And I stop being fleshy. I stop having attitude. I stop treating my spouse the way I feel. That's fleshy. You don't treat people how you feel. You treat people according to God and what he says. It's not about feelings. We don't walk by feelings. You don't love me because you feel like loving me. Because if we felt like loving each other, then the command of God could not come to pass. He says, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you. You don't have to like somebody to love them. The person doesn't need to be nice to you for you to love them. And that is why love is divine. Forgiveness is divine. And all this is divine. So we are coming out from the flesh. And I want us to declare wherever you are, just say, I am leaving the flesh behind. I am leaving the, the knowledge of Christ in the flesh behind. I do not want to know Christ in the flesh anymore. I want to know him according to the spirit. Because remember, you're a spirit. And you must worship God in spirit and in truth. You must operate in Christ in spirit and in truth. You cannot operate in Christ in the flesh. Because then you, can, you will not be able to represent Christ faithfully. Old have passed. New is coming here. And if you knew, you, you fix your relationship with Christ. And your spouse fixes their relationship with Christ. And as you're fixing your relationship with Christ, the Lord... If your spouse is not born again, or if your spouse is not fixing his life, God will help fix that life. You work on you. Don't work on your spouse. You can only work on you. You can only work with the Holy Spirit to change you, right? And allow God to fix the other person. But don't go to prayer asking God to fix the other person while you need fixing. Because if God fixes the other person and then you need fixing, you're going to mess up your marriage. So go fix you. Fulfill your obedience. Then you can be able to punish disobedience when your obedience is complete. 
work on you. This is a time of new beginnings. Refuse the mediocrity in your marriage. Refuse the, the, the stress in your marriage. It doesn't have to be like this. Trust me, it does not have to be like this. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, meaning that we are reconciling whatever was past, whatever was broken, whatever was not work working, whatever was not operational, whatever we try to work with our own hands, whatever we try to do in our own knowledge and understanding, whatever we try to do with money, whatever we try to do with our resources. You when you went out to look for emotional um, you know, satisfaction somewhere else, where you try to just keep the status quo just so that you can have a title in the church, because they said that, you know what, you cannot leave your spouse even if these things are happening, simply because you will not have a title in the church, you can no longer serve in the church. Let us stop knowing Christ in the flesh. Let us get into this ministry of reconciling man and God, our marriages to Christ. Let us reconcile all this nonsense that we've been hearing all over the place, where the man cannot serve, cannot be submissive, where the woman cannot be submissive. We're supposed to submit to each other. Think about it. For you to have great sex, you must submit to each other. For you to have great intimacy, you must give to each other. I give myself to you, you give yourself to me. And we just get this and we, it, it blows up into something unexplainable. That is what intimacy is all about. Give yourself to Christ and he gives himself to you. And you have the intimacy like never before. Our marriages must be reconciled to Christ. Our lives must be reconciled to Christ. You know, the most intimate people and the most affectionate people are those who are already intimate with Christ. They're the most amazing spouses because they already know what intimacy is all about. They practice, you when you practice intimacy with God in the spirit, see the spirit man, once he's strong, then he controls the soul and the body follows. That is the same way. When the spirit goes away from this body, then the soul is taken away and the body falls down and dies because the body only follows what the spirit is doing. So if you feed, and when you feed your spirit man into intimacy with Christ, then the, your, your soul receives the intimacy. Your soul receives this, ah, you become sexual, you become intimate, you, you can know intimacy according to God. And that is why God says, ah, 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 ah. I cannot stop this intimacy from blowing up into the physical and I'm going to create marriage that they may express this intimacy from the spirit realm into the soul, into the physical. And that is why he created marriage. Marriage. The foundation is intimacy with Christ. The foundation is intimacy with Christ. If you have no intimacy with Christ, then your marriage will be wanting. You will never live out to the fullness of what God created marriage to be. And it is intimacy with Christ through the Holy Spirit of God. So if you're born again and you've never received the Holy Spirit of God, this is a time to receive the Holy Spirit of God and let him walk you into intimacy with Jesus, who is your spiritual bridegroom. And it will manifest, trust me, it will manifest in the physical. You see, you must take it upon yourself to want a great marriage, to want marriage according to God's standard. If you take it upon yourself to want the marriage that God intended marriages to be, the wine that is so sweet that people wonder, how did you get sweet wine? Remember Jesus in the wedding at Canaan? And that is the first thing he came to do, is he came to restore marriages. 
He came to reconcile marriages. When the wine was finished and they thought that was what is supposed to happen. You know, this, that this was a good wine. But guess what? Good wine, the wine that is made in the flesh, the wine that you make upon yourself, the wine that you make will get finished. Trust me, it will run dry. It's in the Bible. The wine, they, they had a wedding and they had invited guests and their wine ran out. Why? Because this is the wine they purchased with their own money. This is the wine that they took. They had got, took their strength to just make it. This is the wine that they had their accountant order. This is the wine that the person who was getting the wedding ready and all this was entrusted to make sure wine is there for everybody. But guess what? Ugly wine, fleshy wine will, be, will run dry. You know what? When you look at that woman or that man, and look at the muscles that they had, all the charm that they had whenever they were young and spiffy and all this, it will run dry. It will run dry. The things that used to happen, and the body <laughs> is meant to go like that, right? So if you are fleshy, your wine is going to run dry. It will. Trust me, it will. But once you get Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Son of the Most High God, involved in your marriage. He does not make wine like man makes wine. He does not make wine like we do. He does not make wine in our understanding. He does not make wine as protocol makes wine. He does not make wine like it's supposed to be made or how it was supposed to He does not follow the ingredients of the wine pressing and makers and he does not get, follow any of that. And the mother gave them the, the, the people who, when they gave Jesus the problem, the mother gave the best advice, whatever he says, do it. You want wine? Do you, you want wine in your marriage, right? Then it doesn't matter what he tells you, whatever he says, do it. He might be able to tell you an instruction that he will tell somebody else and there are different instruction. It is not one fixes all or one fits all. Whatever he says, do it. Your marriage is not mine. Your friend's marriage is not yours. Every marriage has its own. But when submitted to Jesus, when the wine is dry, when the wine has run out and there is no other hope, Jesus steps in only if you invite him. And whatever he says, do it. The water that he told them to fill the jars with, with water, it is exactly who he is. He is the word, the water that cleanses us. So he says, fill your life with me. Fill your life with me. Be intimate with me. Yes, let's do this together. Be intimate with me. First, fill your life with me. Fill your life with everything and who I am. Then go pour it out onto your spouse. Go pour that in onto your spouse. And they will wonder, how did you say the best? We've never tasted this wine. Your marriage can only, is only as great as your intimacy with God. That is it. You can't fill your, yourself or your life or who you are with anything else but Christ. For your marriage to have wine that is so sweet that not only you enjoy, but people around you enjoy, your children enjoy. Your family wonders, whoa, you become an inspiration to so many. How, how, how did you do this? Jesus stepped in and I filled myself with him and I worked on my intimacy with him. And that is why my marriage is according to God's word. Today, the word of God from the spirit of God is intimacy with Christ. You're here, you may be married, 
you want this. Trust me. Don't leave earth. Marriage is only on earth. Don't, don't agree, my friends. Don't agree to leave earth without having experienced this in the flesh. This is the only place we can experience marriage according to God's standard. This is the only place we can do it. Why go to heaven and then find out how it was supposed to be and then feel like, man, I missed out. I missed out on this. Listen, God is about to do something great. He is moving in an accelerated uh, speed that has never been seen again before. But he is moving in his church and he wants marriages to represent him faithfully. And anything he tells you to do according to his, his, his view of you, intimacy with him, do it. Whatever he tells you, do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever he tells you that you need to fix in your life, do it. Whatever he tells you that is stopping you from being intimate with him, do it. Whatever he's telling you that you need to do so that you can get to a level of intimacy with him, so that he can be able to flow through your spirit, through your soul, and, through, and manifest in the physical, in, the, in, in your marriage, do it. Do it. Do it. Let's do it. Let's do this. It's about time. I'm like a coach telling us, uh-uh, now we are going, this is the final round. We must win this game. We have been ridiculed for so long. The church of Jesus Christ has been ridiculed for so long. Yes, marriage has been replicated and even people are marrying, men are marrying each other, women are marrying women. Now there is even a marriage that has a woman with two men because she cannot be satisfied with one or a woman with a wife and a husband. I have seen it. I have studied this. I know it exists. Trust me, I've met them. But all that is flesh. Therefore, from now on, we regard no marriage according to the flesh. Let us arise and show them the exact replica. Not a Photoshop uh, copy or, you know, what they think it used to be or it's supposed to be. Let us now show exactly what it is or it was meant to be by building our intimacy with Christ. Today, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask us to pray. I'm going to ask us to pray that we declare if you are not married or you, if, you, if you have never been married or if you are married and your marriage has been ended. Either God ended your marriage or the devil did. God also can end marriages. Whenever it gets to a place where it affects your relationship with him, he values your relationship with him more than your relationship with any human being. And that is why he says very clearly in Mark chapter 10, verse 29, when Peter was asking, hey, or the disciples were asking, what happens if we leave everything to follow you? And he answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or other spouse or children or lands for my sake and the gospels that will not receive much more in this life. So can, are you, are you, does God value your children over his relationship with you? No. Does he value your spouse and says that, yeah, you, you stay with your spouse regardless of whether your relationship with me is affected. No. Why? Why doesn't he care about you staying in marriage without you being able to build intimacy with him? If there is anything in your life that is going to cost you your intimacy with Christ, he says, let it go. And this includes, it includes your house, your brothers, your sisters, your father, your mother, hey, your spouse, wife or husband, your children, can you imagine all of this? Your lands, all your money, for my sake and the gospel's sake. You will receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, 
with persecution because people will not understand it. And in the age to come, you will have eternal life. In other words, and he says, but many who are first will be last and the last first. What is he trying to say? Don't allow your spouse to cost you your eternity. Don't allow your children to cost you your eternity. Don't allow anybody to cost you your intimacy with Christ. Because the minute you compromise your intimacy with Christ, you have already compromised your marriage and your, your, your life, eternal life. But if you leave everything for Christ, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of intimacy with Christ, then God is going to restore all of those in this life. You will get it all back. And when he restores, he just doesn't give you back. He restores in, in, with interest. And then he says, and you will inherit eternal life. So today I want us to go and pray that my father, my God, I want intimacy with you. I've run all over the place trying to fix my marriage with my own strength. But now I want to involve you and I want intimacy with you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I will be able to get close to you and to have intimacy with you and not know you in the flesh as a Christian by mouth, but know you in the spirit, one with you, you in me and I in you. That you fill me with everything that you are. That our marriage will start in the spirit realm. Manifest in the soul, which is the emotional, you know, the outward realm. And then manifest in the physical, where now you can enjoy. It comes from deep down. A great marriage comes from deep down. It comes from deep down your spirit. Into your soul. And out. In manifesting in the body. Let's pray right now. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, if you're born again, you can say this prayer. If you're not born again, I'm going to lead you into getting the gist of God, knowing and accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, because you want marriage according to his standards. His standards are so high. I have refused to take any other standard but his. I have refused. Hey, listen, I am so much worth, there is nobody who can, can know how to love you like Christ. So unless they're intimate with Christ, how can he love you? Unless your spouse is intimate with Jesus, how can he show you unconditional love like Christ loves you? How? So we, we need to go and get the real thing. Let's stop rest, you know, settling for less. Let's dig deep. Let's go get the real thing. The real, the real thing in Jesus' name. So say this if you're not born again. Or if you want to rededicate your life to Christ as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today. And I thank you that you care about my relationship and my intimacy with you and my marriage. Marriage that either was, marriage that is, or marriage to be. I thank you that you care about me. I want you to come into my life, that you may teach me how to love, how to love you, how to be intimate with you. Be my Lord and Savior. I receive it with thanksgiving. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. By the power of the blood of Jesus, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we all can get the Holy Spirit. We all can receive our helper, the Holy Spirit, the one who teaches intimacy like crazy. He is amazing. He is awesome. He knows, oh my gosh, he knows things that we do not even know. And he knows everything about this king. And let me tell you, the minute you become his friend, he reveals to you hidden things, secret things. I'm telling you, you will be amazed. That by the end, it, when it's all said and done, your relationship with God is going to be so intimate that you will be the most intimate human being walking. And in your marriage, my God, you will not, oh my, what can we say? Let's just invite him in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, Father, in Jesus' name, 
You promised us the Holy Spirit. You said that you will not leave us as orphans. But you also said that you will give us the gift, the counselor, the helper, the Holy Spirit, who will teach us all things, who will remind us everything that we need to be reminded, who will be patiently helping us to know who you are and how to please you because he knows you. And what greater gift that a man can give you than his spirit. The spirit of God knows all things of God. And Father Lord, today we ask that you pour out your spirit upon us and in us, fill us from the inside out with your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this gift and thank you for we have received this precious gift. And you say, Lord, in your word that we cannot ask anything that is of, of your will and you don't give it to us. It is your will to give us the Holy Spirit because you want intimacy with us and we want intimacy with you. So thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We receive him with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Holy Spirit of God, I thank you for coming into our lives. And I thank you for you are the greatest helper. I thank you for intimacy. I thank you for you know what Jesus likes and what he doesn't like. You can make us and you're here to crucify our flesh, help crucify this flesh, that we no longer know Christ in the flesh, that we no longer regard marriage in the flesh. Help us, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, help us to know Christ, to be intimate with him, to fill our lives with all that he is. And that this intimacy will overflow into our soul and our body. And that our marriages, the intimacy with Christ will be reflected in our marriages in an intensity that has never been seen before or heard of before. And that the world will look and declare your goodness and your grace. Thank you for choosing to come back to the church and help us, get us back on track, reconcile us back to Christ, reconcile our marriages to what it was supposed to be. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit of God, I pray that everybody who's here married and their spouse is not here, you are the one who works in us to will and to do for his good pleasure. You are the one who convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Holy Spirit of God, go and meet our spouses in Jesus' name. The spouses to be, may you also make them intimate with Christ. That when they come to us, they will already have an intimacy with Christ. And Lord, we do not want any fake people brought into our lives. So stop them before they even get to us. Give us the spirit of discernment to know who is our spouse and who is not. In the mighty name of Jesus. For those broken hearts, oh God. For those wounded, oh Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are the one who ministers healing unto us by the power of the blood of Jesus. I speak to their spirits, to their soul, and to their body, pouring the oil of Gilead, the oil from the throne room of God, to heal every wound, to soothe every soul, every spirit wound, every soul wound, and every body wound. In the name of Jesus, for a lot of sicknesses and diseases started in the spirit realm through unforgiveness, through pain, through heartache, and it went and affected the soul, and when the soul went down the body went down to high blood pressure and ulcers and all these sicknesses and diseases oh jehovah god but you are the healer you heal all our diseases not some of them not part of them but all of our diseases and now jehovah god in the name of jesus by your spirit may the healing begin from the inside out from the deep wounds of the spirit Oh, Lord, restoration to the soul, restoration, Jehovah God. Oh, to the body and the physical manifestation that, Lord, every sickness healed, every disease cured, every burden lifted, every yoke broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, we set every captive free now.
in the mighty name of Jesus, breaking every generational curses, every gener every tongue that has risen against any one of us right now, by the power of the blood of Jesus, where Christ became a curse, by the power of the cross, where Jesus became a curse that we may be blessed. Right now, I am trading every curses for the blessing now in the name of Jesus. And I'm putting every curses at the cross to be crucified in the name of Jesus. And Stay where they belong. Now we receive the blessings that Jesus Christ poured out on us. We shall no longer suffer for other people's mistakes. Forgive all our sins. Reveal to us any hidden sins. And help us, Lord, to just be like you, to fill ourselves with you. Now, Lord, I decree and declare that every marriage has been set free. Every wound has been healed and every spouse is locating us. Whoever needs a spouse, Lord, you're preparing them. And at the appointed time, there will be no delay. At the appointed time, it will not come very fast that they are not able to handle it, that the enemy is going to, be, to take advantage of it. At the appointed time is when we are receiving them. Now, in the name of Jesus, we seal these prayers with the blood of Jesus and the fire of God. And we decree and declare that we are all hidden with Christ in God. Our children are hidden with Christ in God. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, we condemn it in Jesus' name. We are healed. We are set free. We are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. And we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 91 is our portion. Psalms 23 is our portion. And we, oh God, are your children. There is nothing, Lord, you withhold that is good from your children. We thank you. We bless you. We worship and adore you. We give you thanks. Just if you are wherever you are, just tell God, thank you for what he has released. Thank you for what he has done. Thank you for rescuing us from every bondage. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just say thank you wherever you are. If you are, are next to the chat, type there, thank you. Put it in the chat, say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, just thank him. Receive all these things with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving releases them to you. When you're thankful, God says, hey, you have been made whole. There is somebody who was healed. He healed 10 lepers and one of them came back to say thank you. And he told him you have been made whole. Oh, there is something about saying thank you that makes your miracle permanent that makes you whole that gives you the fullness of who god is say thank you thank you thank you thank you lord thank you lord wherever you are lift up your hands say thank you lord when you if you are close to the chat just chat there thank you father for it is in jesus holy and mighty and precious name that we pray we believe and we have received with thanksgiving Amen and amen. Thank, amen. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll give it back to Minister Dorcas um, to end for us. May God bless you all. I love you so much. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Minister Zawad. May God fill you. May he give you more knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now we pray for you, dear Lord. We pray for Minister Zawadi, Jehovah God. Fulfill her, Jehovah God. Give her knowledge, understanding, oh Jehovah, that he may be able even to give, oh Jehovah. We know the gifts that you give her, Jehovah, is not for her, but for the church. Thank you for she has delivered, oh God. We, we give you all the glory and honor. We thank you for her, Jehovah God. Bless her in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless her children, dear Lord. We give you all the glory and honor, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.